Hello everyone and welcome back. Yes, the time has finally come to reveal my official final prediction for Miss Grand International this year. I cannot believe it is literally just around the corner. There has been so many things going on and honestly I have sort of a renewed respect for Miss Grand International this year. Believe me, they had me really fired up when they decided to make Ukraine and Russia roommates. Um, still don't know how that got approved, but luckily once the girls got where they were going, the organization decided just to give them different roommates just to, you know, obviously appease uh, not only the woman representing Ukraine, but the fan base as a whole that was up in arms about it, including myself. So I'm definitely glad that they mm, at least attempted to rectify the situation. And from then on, we could all enjoy the pageant. So I've been very impressed with Miss Grand International. Honestly, they have been promptly posting photos from all of the events. Everything that they've been doing has been available for free on their YouTube channel, which as a stingy bitch, you know, I am all for. So honestly, I have a renewed appreciation for the Miss Grand International organization this year. And for that reason, I am even more invested. So I have gone on to make my final prediction this year. I posted a bit of an early prediction, I think a couple of days ago, but trust me guys, the list has changed because since then we've had NatCos, we've had prelims. So obviously we've had a lot more to look out for and think about. I've also had a little look over other people's thoughts and ideas, you know, just to see maybe maybe other people are noticing things that I am not necessarily noticing. So without further ado, let me get into my top 20 for this year's Miss Grand International competition. As you guys probably already know, one contestant will get into the top 20 by way of the country of the year winner of thing um i think last time i checked the top two were vietnam or and thailand but i think vietnam might have won that thailand is je definitely going to be making top 20 nonetheless and then one lucky woman is going to be making the top 10 via the fan vote now i'm not even going to go into guessing who the fan vote is going to be usually from experience it's usually vietnam but I'm really not sure this year because there are a lot of favorites. So let me just get into my top 20, starting at number 20. Guys, I'm going to be hopeful. I'm going to be hopeful for my birth country. And I am going to put South Africa at number 20. She gave a very decent performance at prelims. And you know what? I have hope. I have hope. I'm going to have her at number 20. Is it because I my favorites list stopped at 18 and I didn't know who to put at 19 and 20? Probably. But if she does make top 20 or even goes further, I would be super happy. It's just, guys, to be honest, we haven't seen that much from her. There are a lot of other strong contestants. You guys know that I usually back south african and namibian contestants like a crazy person like when it came to shanique at miss um supranational when it came to you know la Leila at miss supranational as well and also when it came to my prediction for miss universe last year and the year before that you guys know i usually back our girlies all the way but with miss grand international this year it just it wouldn't sit right for me with me to put South Africa higher because I'm just not feeling it. You know, it's just not in my gut. It is not in my heart. So for me, South Africa is at number 20. At number 19, I have the splendid Ghana. Ghana performed so well at prelims for me, to be honest with you. Her gown performance, especially that gown was outstanding. If nothing else, I really want to see Ghana at finals just to see what her finals gown is. Because she really surprised me pleasantly at the prelims with her gown. At number 18, I have surprise, surprise, the Philippines. I 
I was under the impression earlier today that I would be putting the Philippines higher than number 18. But then I had to go through all of the other contestants. And at the end of the day, I just felt forced to put the Philippines at number 18 because all of these other contestants, I couldn't get it past my heart to put them lower or any lower than what I eventually put them. So for me, the Philippines, although she is splendid, is at number 18. At number 17, I have Cambodia. If you guys watched my Miss Grand International Natcos review, you would know that I absolutely loved Cambodia at Natcos. This woman has a lot of personality. I wouldn't be surprised if she goes higher, if she enters the top 10, things like that. For me at the moment, she's at number 17, but do know that this woman, I love her. I think she's absolutely spectacular. At number 16, I have Spain. I know that Spain has been a very big fan favorite. I definitely think that she deserves the accolades as well. And at number 15, I have Vietnam. Now, obviously, Vietnam is a fan favorite. Vietnam has always been a fan favorite. In fact, like I said, she was in the top two of country of the year alongside Thailand. So I have no doubt that Vietnam will be entering the top 20 this year. Whether she'll enter top 10 remains to be seen. Obviously, she is trying to get that back to back. The winner of Miss Grand International 2021, obviously having been from Vietnam herself. So I am I am optimistic to see what's going to be happening with Vietnam. At number 14, I have Ecuador. Ecuador is another woman who has surprised us. Obviously, Ecuador did very well at Miss Grand International last year as well. So I'm also excited to see where she's going to end up. At number 13, I have Venezuela and this this feels kind of weird to me because I know this woman made, you know, she made the top at Miss Universe last year. And if you are going by, you know, the pageant hierarchy, um, you know, Miss Universe is supposed to be a little bit more difficult in theory than Miss Grand International. Although I do think that every single international pageant has its own challenges. So for me, it felt a bit weird to only be putting Venezuela at number 13, given that she actually placed at Miss Universe. But to me, it didn't, it didn't feel quite right to put her in the top 10 when I looked at the women who are competing alongside her. At number 12, I have Nigeria. Nigeria has really gone up the ranks for me, especially after prelims, because she is the one that came through with the Barbie core. She was amazing at prelims, in my opinion. I know a lot of people love Nigeria as well, not only here in Africa, but, you know, all over the world. I've seen people loving on Nigeria, and I definitely can understand why, because at prelims, she was just amazing and i definitely think that nigeria will place or at least i hope she will for me she's at number 12 right now and at number 11 i have colombia colombia wowed me at prelims as well with that beautiful gown the beautiful performance work that she did on stage what mind-blowing mind-blowing but well what else can we expect from colombia i mean south american women overall are just always amazing at stage performances. Colombia is absolutely no different. So for me, she's on the very, very, very fringes of the top 10. Moving into the actual top 10 now, keep in mind one woman will actually be voted into the top 10 by fans. I'm not going to do any guesswork as to who that will be. So I'm just going to go over my own top 10. At number 10, I have Mexico. Mexico definitely was amazing at prelims. Okay, come on. That gown, that gown, please. Mexico really blew me away at prelims. Not only that, I also saw a lot of other people had her in their top as well. Guys, I don't just pull these things out of my thumb, okay? I do also look over what's the experts are saying, keep in mind, I'm not an expert, I'm just a fan. So I actually go around checking, okay, what are these people saying? Am I on the right track with my thoughts? And a lot of people were loving Mexico. I myself loved Mexico, so definitely she is in my top 10. 
at number nine i have the dominican republic dominican republic is just such a stunning and magnetic woman i feel like when she's on stage you just cannot take your eyes off of her it feels like everything around her just disappears and she is all that you can focus on dominican republic is honestly just so stunning at number eight i have puerto rico puerto rico again one of those women who just keeps on giving she keeps on bringing it she never ceases to bring it and obviously i am i am expecting puerto rico in the top 10 at this point then at number seven i have brazil which is interesting because i think brazil used to be higher for me but after prelims brazil has fallen to number seven which obviously is still a good placement she could still place top five arguably even but guys, we don't even know which of these women will place top 10, which won't, which will even go to top 20. So this is all just speculation. But for me, Brazil, Brazil is still an amazing woman. But the woman that I have above her right now, guys, these are, these are women coming to kill. At number six, I have Peru. And I actually think that a lot of people are underestimating Peru. Peru was already an international winner. She won top model of the world in 2018. Granted, it's a minor international title, but it is an international title nonetheless. And it's not necessarily unknown. It's just not as popular shall i say as the likes of miss universe miss world etc but oh my gosh this woman has performed her heart out at miss grand international prelims i've loved everything that i've been seeing from peru that's why she's at number six for me on the very very fringes of the top five before we go on guys that i mentioned that news has come out that the entirety of the top 10 this year will actually be staying um around the Miss Grand International organization and all of the people working at the organization and they will be traveling the world for like a month after the competition. So the entire top 10 will be going on this victory tour sort of thing along with the winner runners up of course. I absolutely that's where do they get the budget for these things? That's absolutely amazing. And if they keep going on with these incentives, pretty soon I think Miss Grand International will become like up there, like competing with Miss Universe because they have been so amazing these past few weeks that the competition has been happening. Anyway, moving into my top five, guys, as my fourth runner up, I actually have the host country this year indonesia this woman has been so incredible i think that indonesia always has amazing styling not to mention her evening gown was to die for the absolutely amazing detail just so gorgeous this woman as a whole is just incredible she definitely deserves a spot in the top five i i definitely see her in the top five at number four, I have Curacao. Now, Curacao, if you guys watched, I think it was my last prediction video, Curacao was in the top 15, top 16 at Miss Universe 2015. Yes, I think it was a top 16. Which, guys, Miss Universe 2015, one of the most notoriously competitive editions and notorious for other reasons as well of miss universe ever and she was there amongst it all in the top 16 how incredible is that so i'm definitely i'm definitely looking forward to be seeing how she will be placing but curacao i i think you know for her history I think she's a bit underrated this year. I don't see a lot of people talking about her enough. And I think she's definitely going to come out surprising a lot of people. But obviously not me because I see her. I see her coming a mile away. <laughs> I'm going to be super embarrassed if she doesn't even place. Now for my second runner up, I have the gorgeous Costa Rica. Costa Rica has been amazing me. She even managed to surprise me when it came to the very boring sportswear competition, which just does not hit the same as swimmer. Listen, I know that Indonesia is a very, you know, uh, conservative country that 
you know, they a large portion of the country are Muslims and they do believe in modesty and I respect that and I appreciate that. But sportswear just, it didn't hit. It didn't hit for me. Would I rather that they walk in swimsuits? Not if it is going to be, you know, offensive to the country that it's happening in, then it's fine. I'm fine with sportswear. But you can't, you can't deny that sportswear was, it was undeniably awkward. These women were walking around in straight up gym clothes with high heels and somehow that's, that's just different than having them walk around in swimsuits with high heels. Makes sense, right? Anyway, Costa Rica even managed to impress me when it came to the sportswear thing that they had going on. This woman has amazing stage presence. She has amazing charisma on stage. Her gown segment was gorgeous. I just, I love Costa Rica. I am expecting to see her in the top five. I have her as my second runner up. So hoping for the best when it comes to Costa Rica. Now, lastly, what it comes down to, I am expecting Thailand to either win or place as the first runner-up. At the moment, I have Thailand as the first runner-up just because this woman has been perfect, okay? She has not put a foot wrong from all her performances, from Natkos to even sportswear to even the evening gown, like she was amazing in that. She straight up reminded me of the woman representing Thailand at Miss Universe this year. I thought that Thailand has been absolutely amazing thus far. And I know that a lot of people usually when a country, when a, when a pageant is based in a certain country, the way that Miss Grand International is based in Thailand, a lot of people usually have certain feelings when that particular country wins, right? Like when the Philippines wins Miss Earth or when Japan wins Miss International or when the USA obviously wins Miss Universe. A lot of people are like, yeah, that's, it's, you know, you have feelings about that. But for me, I would not mind at all if Thailand won Miss Grand International this year. In fact, I think that it would be very, very well deserved. I would have absolutely no quarrels with that. But I do have Thailand as my first runner up. So for my winner, my winner is actually unchanged from my previous prediction video. For my winner, I have Czech Republic. Czech Republic has remained one of the best contestants at this year's competition. Not to mention her interview went sp splendidly, like the closed door interview went amazing. Her performances on stage have been incredible, which has been surprising because, you know, Czech Republic is, they are European countries and European countries have not been doing that well in pageantry at all. So for Czech Republic to be coming out from nowhere suddenly with this amazing contestant has been a bit shocking. Like, where are the rest of you hiding? Why aren't you competing? I explained at length in my previous prediction video why I think Czech Republic should win and also why I think the Miss Grand International organization would have incentives for her to win. So feel free to go and watch that for the full story. Bottom line, I think that Czech Republic would be a good Miss Grand International and I also feel like with the current climate, you know, the world's socio-economic and political climate. I think that uh, having Czech Republic as the Miss Grand International for this year would be very beneficial to the Miss Grand International organization whose entire thing is stopping war and violence. And, you know, you can think to yourself where Czech Republic is located on the map of Europe and draw your own conclusions from that but i do think that this woman is stunning she would be very uh, deserving as well as as well as thailand of course and i think even all of the women in my top 10 even up to even up to even up to 18 to be honest with you i don't think really in pageantry i don't think that there are any women 
Okay, there might be a few. But I, I think in pageantry as a whole, most of the women competing would do the job just fine. And I think that it's down to the individual judges and the individual people making the decisions as to who should win. I think it's down to them and it's down to absolute minutia in their di- decisions. I know that a lot of people have been saying for years that when it comes to Miss Grand International, the organizer sort of handpicks the girls. And you know what? If that's the case, I can also see a reasoning for that as well. Because at the end of the day, running a pageant is owning a business and you have to make the best decisions for your business. And like I said before, pageantry is part science, part art, part pure witchcraft and luck. So whoever wins probably wouldn't have won if it was five months postponed or two months, you know, out of the way. You understand what I mean? It's like I always say, different nights, different girls. So whoever wins, I think is sort of irrelevant. I think that anyone who wins at the end of the day will at least be somewhat decent at the job. That's a really morbid way to end this video, but it's the truth as I see it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Let me know who your favorites are in the comments down below. I'll be looking out to see your favorites. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.